Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cool Black Nerd, and I am a uh, self-taught engineer slash programmer. I often, you know, go out and I talk to people about technology and, and educate people on the cloud and all these kinds of things. And uh, one of the questions people often ask is, how in the world did you get a, a cloud engineering job? How did you go from zero to cloud engineering? I don't have a degree. I don't have a computer science degree. And I didn't go to a boot camp. So how do you go from, I don't know how to program to becoming a cloud engineer in the next three years? Like, how do you do that? So story begins with, uh, I met some guys who actually recommended I learn uh, how to program first. And the first language I actually learned was Ruby on Rails. So I learned Ruby on Rails. Uh, I learned Ruby on Rails. I learned some JavaScript. I was learning enough to really uh, actually, you know, enough to build a little small application. I basically, the ways that I was learning was like, I would watch somebody build an app, I would copy it, I would try to build it on my own, and any concept or any part of it that maybe didn't really click or I didn't remember, I would go back and reread it, and then I would go and, you know, try to build it again. And I just rinse and repeat until a lot of the concepts really started kind of nailing home, like, you know, understanding methods, functions, variables, object-oriented programming, testing, unit testing, and just really picking up all of this lingo and whatnot. And, but I was also going out to meetups and actually meeting people. So one of the big things about getting into the tech industry that I picked up pretty quickly is that it's a pretty communal industry. Like, so you kind of, you really need to be around people that are doing it. And you really need to kind of soak up the things that they're saying because you can definitely learn at home by yourself and you can make progress, but it's not gonna be quite the same as like actually going out and meeting people and talking to them and getting their actual takes and their actual perspectives on technology and the tools that they use and things that the companies are using and so on and so forth. I think that's really, really important on that journey. If you're going to do the self-programming, you're gonna do the self-teaching, you have to make sure you're pairing in with actually getting out into the community and getting to know people or getting on, going to meetups or going to conferences and things like that. I think that was really, really pivotal to my journey because with that, I was actually able to gain the perspective that I needed in order to, to, to really prepare myself for uh, my first job, right? Because I think a lot of times what, you know, programming and self-teaching does not teach you is like how to fill in those like those little gaps. Like, how do I get that first job? How do I win them over? How do I, you know what I'm saying? What do I need to have to show them in order for them to bite on me, right? Because at the end of the day, you're coming in with nothing. You're coming in with zip, zero, nada. So you, you have to find a way to get them to pay attention to you. And I learned a lot of that by going to meetups and working with people and just doing everything that I could to show people that I had some type of knowledge and understanding of what was going on. And so with that being said, like I will give talks at meetups. I will help out and volunteer at meetups. And then even beyond that, I would even just build little small programs and little small uh, applications and stuff with whatever I knew. Like, I'm not saying that they were necessarily good, but they were at least enough to where I could actually show somebody I can build something. Like I can actually spin up an a, a application, I can hook up a controller, I can hook up a view, I can hook up, a, I, can, I can actually program out a model and a business logic. You know, I actually now understand DNS. I actually understand how to get traffic to the website. Like, I would just build it and, and I would just sit there and I would try to explain it to people and try to communicate with people like what's going on. And in fact, the funny thing about it is, is that when I actually uh, applied for a diversity and inclusion scholarship at a conference, at a no conference, I met a gentleman there who actually ended up being the interviewer at my first job. And it's crazy how that works. It's crazy how that, that even happened because it's almost like I was putting in groundwork that I didn't even know I was putting in. And that's why I always recommend to people like, you gotta get involved, you gotta get out there, you gotta give a talk, you gotta do something, work with people, network, do, you know what I'm saying? Because that's really where your opportunities are gonna come from. And you will be surprised at how many bricks or how many steps you can lay before you even get to a certain point in this journey. So that actually helped out a lot. So please make sure you know you're out there going to meetups, trying to talk at conferences. Even if you wanna start a little YouTube joint, you know what I'm saying? Start YouTube and just show how you're improving, show how you're working, showing what you're working on, things like that help. Like anything that can help build up your resume or build up a portfolio, or give some, or paint somebody the uh, the best picture that they possibly can of you and maybe where you're at in your skill set, 
do it. You know what I'm saying? So create that portfolio, create some content, go out here and network and, and just build up a resume for yourself. And you don't need to go to a boot camp. You don't need a degree for that. Because the reality is, is when you go in there, they wanna see what you're doing right now. I don't wanna see what you did six months ago, a year ago, or whatever, or what little thing that you thought was cool or whatever. Like, all right, cool, like show me what you're doing. And then when I see these applications and I see what you're building, I wanna act, I want you to explain to me what's going on and that's the biggest thing there are a lot of people out here that are teaching themselves how to program and maybe they can kind of recite like what a variable is or what a method is and things like that but the thing really comes together when you actually understand the underlying concepts and the glue that brings everything together and you can actually articulate that because when you go into these environments and you're working with other developers especially developers who are more experienced communication is going to be key and if you can show early on that you can communicate your understanding of problems and how you solve them and things that you ran into it just makes you a more viable candidate it just makes you look that much more attractive to companies or to startups or to whoever you, you're trying to apply for. So create the portfolio, create some videos, and understand those underlying concepts and get really good at being able to drill some of those things home and be able to communicate those things in a way that you can really display that, hey, I know what's going on. So when I got my job as a support developer, what ended up happening was, was that I was basically getting, uh, you know, basically ticket items, like any bugs that would come in, I would fix the bugs. If there were small features that wanted to get added in to, to uh, application, I would add them in. And that's kind of kind of how I got my chops around reading larger uh, code databases and uh, troubleshooting and uh, adding features and trying to build around code, not necessarily building it all the way up from scratch. Because the one thing that I'll say that I missed in my journey of teaching myself how to program is that I never really got exposed to how to work around the code base. That's just, I was always building something from the ground up or something new or something that wasn't somebody else's. And that's one reason I actually even recommend find a way to contribute to open source. Like if you can find an open source project, there are plenty of open source projects out here that you can actually contribute to, that you can actually do things for. I wish I would've did a better job, I'm not gonna lie. I, I just am not the, the greatest at the whole open source thing. It makes me nervous, it makes my anxiety high. I'll be like, I don't know what's about to happen, whatever, whatever. But I recommend you doing it. I really, really recommend you do uh, open source. And because when you can expose yourself to code bases that already exist and, and learning and understanding how to work around those code bases and writing tests and doing things of that na nature, I think it can really help you get ready for that first job or really help you level up. Go contribute to open source, find somebody that's working on an application or a product and that you can hop in on and maybe you have to come behind them and work on work behind their code or something like that. Something that exposes you to code that's actually not yours. But at that company, I got exposed to a lot of those concepts, but there was a guy there who was an admin. He was a uh, he was the only admin, and he did all the server administration. He did all the the Linux and the standing up servers and deploys and all that kind of stuff. He did all of those things, and so he was the only person there. And I'm just kind of like, well, shoot, if he there and he the only one here, I'm gonna go ride. With, I'm gonna ride with him because it's probably gonna be job security. <laughs> That's basically what my mentality was like go find a position in the company that's going to allow you some job security and so with him i actually learned a lot about uh just more system admin work about the operating system about networking about the cloud and that's what really kind of busted things wide open for me so with him i i got introduced to it but then i on my own i went ahead and learned about uh, AWS in my free time. So I, I actually started studying for the AWS Solutions Architect exam. In fact, I actually purchased the course from uh, A Cloud Guru. A Cloud Guru is the course that I use to actually learn about AWS, the Solutions Architect Associate exam. And so I took like three to four months to learn it. And it was tough because a lot of concepts I was completely green to. You know what I'm saying? VPCs, object stores, networking, subnet, firewalls, site arranges, security, and identity access management. A lot of that stuff was kind of like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? But I gave myself three to four months to learn it, and I learned it. I learned it enough to actually pass the exam. 
And so once I passed the exam, like I, I just got a new confidence, I got a new swag, and I was like, oh snap, like, you know what I'm saying, I know something. And basically I took that and I continued to get my skills better as far as like the programming aspects and learning more about the cloud and things that we can do and, and tools that we can leverage within companies to actually make products better. And from there, I actually ended up getting another job where I, you know, made a, a pretty big jump as far as my salary is concerned, but then I made a big jump in responsibility as well because I was a web ops developer. And so being a web ops developer, I got exposed even more so to a larger application at a larger company and I got introduced to more deeper concepts in the, in the context of um, DevOps, you know, build pipelines, release pipelines, uh, containers, Kubernetes, security networking like i went like a layer deeper once i actually got to my next position where i was a, a web ops developer and there you know i'm starting to learn like golang and python uh i started really learning about lambda and api gateways and then my knowledge from from that standpoint started to kind of really balloon and from there so i got two security certifications i got one which was uh, the CompTIA Security Plus, and then I got the uh, CCNA Cyber Ops. So one thing I really wanted to position myself in was I really wanted to bump up my knowledge of security because as I started learning more about the cloud, I started realizing more of, about the gaps in security when it comes to the cloud. So I was like, well, cool, let me go learn about security. And I already got the AWS joint, and you know, with that, I could be, you know, cloud security. And that's basically what I ended up doing. So I went and got two more certs about, you know, security and then I already was working in the cloud. So I kind of put myself in a position to be, all right, cool, he knows the cloud, but he knows security, but he also has a little bit of skill at programming. So, and it's all just started from programming. Like it really just started from programming. It just kind of built up from there because I kept continuing to expose myself to people who were, maybe a few steps ahead of me and maybe I wanted to be there. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm gonna go hang out with this guy and I'm gonna learn more. That's how I learned about the cloud. And then when I actually got to the next position as a web ops uh, developer, I started learning more about security. So then I went and got the security certifications and now I'm in my role now, which is a cyber liability engineer. And so as a cyber liability engineer, now I actually learn a whole lot more about metrics and uh you know obviously cyber liability and user workflows and how the user experience can be affected by cloud resources not you know working properly or microservices not acting up and setting up alarms and disaster recovery and so on and so forth so now i feel like i have you know i'm at a point where i have a pretty solid understanding of like what an application looks like you know from idea to build to maintenance to disaster recovery to everything like that's like the whole views that's the thing like that's basically my journey that's kind of how i went into it so i learned how to program um i went out to meetups and i networked with people and you know created some relationships early on and kind of started you know doing talks and stuff like that from there i got my first uh, job i got it you know low paying job not the highest paying job you know it was only i was making like 35k it wasn't even no money like to be real with you i made like 35k um in my first job but then after i left there i ended up doubling my salary after I got the AWS Cloud Solutions Architect uh, certification. Stayed there, grew my skills more, got some more security certs, and then I went and got a job as a cyber liability engineer, which I, you know, I cleared over six figures. And that's all within three years. That's all within three years. So you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. If you want to go the cloud route, if you want to become a cloud engineer, you can do it. Uh, like I said, program network continue to get better go get a certification certify your knowledge and continue to just grow that skill set continue to play with projects continue to play with new services that they come out and continue to grow you know your brand as an engineer so um hopefully you know what i'm saying if y'all got any questions hit me up man like i said i'm cool black nerd c-o-l-b-l-k-n-e-r-d i know this video was kind of long i'm sorry y'all this is like the first one i at least wanted to get the story out the way so that I can actually begin to start talking about the actual technology and, and just start, let's start learning, man. Let's get together, let's learn.
let's just just learn let's figure this thing out i want to help y'all become the best engineers that y'all possibly can be i want to help y'all become more technically savvy i want to help y'all learn what it takes to build a career in technology and that's what i'm here for so if y'all got any questions if i want to hear about something if y'all want to learn about something hit me up um i got all the game in the world to give and you know y'all be safe out there peace love and all that good stuff and i'm gonna holler at y'all peace